we're going to talk about breast cancer. So breast cancer is linked to estrogen exposure and things like early menarche or late menopause, hormone replacement therapy, nulliparity, and obesity. Genetic predispositions include BRCA1 and 2, P53 mutations known as Lee-Fermini syndrome, Poitiers, and European ancestry. African Americans are more likely to get triple negative breast cancer. Radiation is also a risk factor. This can be from prior cancer, occupation, or being in a sci-fi film and being bitten by a radioactive spider. Lifestyle factors associated with breast cancer are a high-fat diet, uh, alcohol use, and smoking. Having a family or personal history of breast cancer is also a risk factor. Uh, the patient will be a female older than 65 or a male with a BRCA2 mutation with constitutional symptoms. On exam, there may or may not be a mass. The most common area for a mass is the upper outer quadrant. There may be skin dimpling, nipple inversion, solid fixed lymph nodes, nipple discharge or bleeding, ulceration, and upper extremity edema. Diagnosis usually starts with a mammogram. Uh, guidelines vary, but the American Cancer Society suggests annual mammograms from age 40 to 55, and then every two years until age 75 or until the patient is no longer expected to live another healthy 10 years. If mammogram is positive, uh, you should perform an ultrasound and a corneal biopsy. So how do you know if a mammogram is positive? The BIRAD scale is used, ranging from 1 to 6, with 1 being negative and 6 being a biopsy-proven malignancy, and then 0 meaning needs additional imaging. A lump in a patient less than 30 years old requires a more complicated diagnosis. First, wait 1 to 2 menstrual cycles, and if the lump persists, get an ultrasound, because breast tissue is dense in younger women and mammogram is somewhat less reliable. If the ultrasound shows a cyst, get a fine needle aspirate, which may actually resolve the cyst. If there is blood or if the cyst recurs, then get a mammogram. In general, benign mammogram findings are a well-circumscribed mass with a surrounding radiolucent ring and diffuse microcalcifications. Suspicious findings are an irregular or speculated focal density with clustered microcalcifications. On ultrasound, benign findings are a well-circumscribed, fluctuant, homogeneous, posterior-enhancing mass, such as a cyst. Suspicious findings include an irregular or speculated, firm, heterogeneous mass with posterior shadowing. The most common types of breast cancer are ductal and lobular. Ductal cancers include invasive ductal carcinoma, which makes up about 80% of invasive breast cancers. They are aggressive, but usually unilateral. If caught before breaking through the basement membrane, this is called ductal carcinoma in situ. Lobular cancers can also be either invasive or carcinoma in situ. They are usually less aggressive than ductal cancers, but are more commonly bilateral and multifocal. A more rare type of cancer is Paget's disease of the breast. It is rare and affects the ducts and the skin of the areola and nipple. The patient generally reports an erythematous, pyritic, burning vesicular rash with scale and bleeding. Finally, there is inflammatory breast cancer. It is also rare. It is an aggressive dermal lymphatic invasion of carcinoma cells. These patients have peau d'orange, or an orange peel appearance of the skin on physical exam, and a tender, painful erythematous skin rash. I've outlined a very simplified treatment outline here. It leaves out most of the advanced forms of breast cancer, which normally require some form of neoadjuvant therapy. But the more common or high yield treatment strategies are outlined here. For ductal carcinoma in situ, consider lumpectomy and radiation versus a mastectomy. They have similar recurrence rates, with lumpectomy and radiation having a slightly higher recurrence rate. Lobular carcinoma in situ is treated the same, but the patient and physician should discuss prophylactic bilateral mastectomy, as lobular carcinoma in situ in one breast is indicative of an increased risk in the other breast. 
For invasive ductal carcinoma, lumpectomy may still be performed if too much breast isn't involved, but sentinel lymph node biopsy and radiation are needed. Modified radical mastectomy, which includes axillary node dissection, is also an option. Radical mastectomy is necessary if the pec major muscle is involved. If the lymph nodes come back positive, the patient needs chemo. Um, estrogen receptor or progesterone receptor positive cancers get treated with tamoxifen, raloxifene, or anastrozole. Invasive lobular carcinomas are treated the same as invasive ductal car carcinomas, but uh, again, you need to consider prophylactic bilateral mastectomy due to the increased risk of bilateral cancers with lobular carcinomas. For Paget's disease of the breast, workup and management are unchanged from above. For inflammatory breast cancer, chemotherapy is generally used, surgery is generally contraindicated, and the patient faces a high mortality rate. All HER2 positive cancers should receive trastuzumab, and you need to remember the association between trastuzumab and dilated cardiomyopathy. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more videos like this one. Remember, if you don't want to miss it, look below and click it.